Hello out there. Hello, YouTubers. Hello, subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. <gasps> Thank you, Desby D, for my little, I don't want to pronounce his name incorrectly. My husband walks in the room and he says, a Paddington bear. <laughs> Thank you, Desby. Thank you. Thank you, supporters. I had a live session earlier today. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I hope I posted it so you guys can see it. And then also, too, I want to keep doing those in the future, and I'll start giving you guys a heads up. So let's get started. I want to talk about um, Harry's court, day in court. So first of all, it was on the low low that he was going, so no one knew, and he showed up, whatever. That's how we we know things don't have to be leaked and things can be kept quiet when they want to over there at the uh, Montecito Hollywood wannabe royals. Starting to change her name. I know through the days it was Mexit and now it's some other things, Nutmeg. Uh, Poppy calls her Nutmeg. But um, yeah, there's t it's time for a new name because... Um, Basically, she just earns them as we go along. No, I wanted to mention that whatever the court date was about privacy, which is ironic because Harry talks about how his family wouldn't protect him and Megan's privacy. Like he was just so upset about things being leaked, and that was one of the reasons why they did that docu series because um, they were planting stories. According to Harry, they were planting stories and plotting against him and Megan. It doesn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. But the very place, the, the, these two, these two, that said that the stories were leaked, planted, and all this about them. And even where he's at now with the court stuff, trying to say that his phone was tapped into or they were spying on him and Megan when they were getting into cars or whatever. The point is, is that Harry was spying on people. Megan was spying on people, trying to collect information so she could bring it back and create a docuseries and, and go in on the royal family. That's not going to go away. It's not. It's not going to go away. It's not like it's going to disappear because it happened a couple of two years ago or it's just not fresh in people's minds. But it's still there. And so it's just ironic that that would be something that he he's still. It's just weird how these two talk against the things that they do themselves. You talk about the media, but yet you use it for everything. You know, you talk about the royal family like you don't want to be a part of it anymore and don't want to be, you know, part of the institution. But yet and still you want to wear uh, a, a tiara on the balcony and be seen and be heard and have Archie's name yelled out in history. But not just Archie, Prince Archie. You can't tell me she didn't rush and get those titles really quick before the coordination, just in case they do read his name off. They'll read it, Prince and Archie, Princess. Megan's strategic. She does everything for a reason. But not to digress, because I may go back to that very subject, because I just, I, I'm having a hard time understanding why Megan, not Harry, <laughs> Megan wants to be on the balcony. Like some of my subscribers said, they're going to be very disappointed in, in Charles if he allows them to, to get on the on the balcony because it's, it is giving in to these two. It's allowing them to have privileges that they shouldn't have. I was on Sean, um, Sean Edwards' show today, and he had a guest, and he was saying that, and I said this earlier to my subscribers, but... You know, she wants to do the fun stuff of being the royal, but she doesn't want to do the work that comes along with being a royal. She didn't want to go to Africa shaking people's hands and living in different places and, and traveling. She, she didn't like that. She didn't want to do that, and she wasn't getting paid for it, remember? And so they decided to leave because 
she didn't want to do that. That's why she really left and she wanted to be in Hollywood. But the problem with that is, is that everybody has a problem with her trying to be on the balcony, trying to wear a tiara, trying to be a part of something other than just the family. I believe Charles and Camilla and William are listening to these two. And here, Harry says he doesn't want an institution. He wants a family. And so when they give him what he wants, the family, here's your invitation and you're coming as a guest, not a participant, then, then they start writing stuff in the news and demanding things. Oh, I, I want to be on the balcony. I want a tiara. I want his name mentioned. I want to be in the parade. I want to sit with the dignitaries. I want to walk in the church on the left side, and I want to sit right here. Who does she think she is that she can just start demanding and feel like she's entitled to these things after she sat on the Oprah Winfrey show and told us that this family was racist and that she was in some type of dis duress, mental duress. Like it was mentally bothering her during the time that she was over there in the UK where Harry felt like he had to fly her over here really fast to save her or protect her. Like, it was a big deal in the docuseries and on Oprah that they were running for their lives. And now they've been invited to attend something all back over there, and now they want to be a part of it. Shouldn't she still have scars and... And still be feeling like, oh my God, I'm and shaken and nervous about going over there. She's going to be shaken and nervous when she goes over there because she knows the British people have smelled her coffee and knows that it has no sugar in it. There's nothing sweet about Megan. It's sour. <laughs> She's a sour. She's a sour. It's sour. Everything she touches is sour. Does that make sense to any of us? That Megan will actually feel entitled in, to feel like she should be on the balcony as if they're having this family moment. As, as if everything is okay. We've settled the racism claims and we settled all the back and forth. You're not going to say any more secrets. Yes, you are. You're coming out with a new memoir. And I say a new one added to the uh, an extended Extended uh, memoir 2.2. Let's add this in the book, Harry, because like me and my subscribers said, me and you guys talked earlier and you said we both agreed that Megan put a section in that book. And Debbie, uh, Desby said Harry wouldn't come up with those kind of Harry would not come up with the bridesmaid dresses. And the lip gloss. And the other petty nonsense. Petty. Petty he say, she say. This, this, this. Very petty. Everything that they stated in their docuseries and on Oprah was petty until they started talking about racism and suicidal. That's when the stuff got real. But most of it is petty. Me and my, I don't, me and Samantha doesn't talk anymore. I can't invite Ashley to the, to the, to the, um, wedding because of this stuff. The press is after me. The tabloids call me from Compton. Petty. Um, I, I petty. Petty. Conjuring up stuff that doesn't even need to be conjured up. Like Chris Rock said. You hit the light skin lottery and now you're complaining about it. It's disgusting. I won't, I won't, I want. Poppy said the other day, she says she's just the uh, she's just want she's got her hand out. I want this Harry, I want that Harry, I want this. Speaking of Harry and the in London today. Where was she? Don't you think she should have been by his side? Don't you think she should have been holding his hand, walking beside him, doing all this stuff with him to support him? I think it's odd that she wasn't there. I really do. I thought it was odd that she didn't get out the car, walk in there with him, and do whatever they're going to do together. Because it involves both of them. 
She the one told him to sue over this. He's She's the reason why he's down there doing all of this because Macon can't sleep at night and he's still trying to please the woman that he will never be able to please. That task is in is not even obtainable. No one will be able to make her happy. She's been she's been divorced once and in two relationships. Like those two main relationships with Corey and Trevor. Did, I'm not saying that she can't keep a man. It took me a minute to get mine. But what I am saying is that they couldn't make her happy, Harry, and neither are you. Because now she's messing with the king. She's knocking on the king's door. I was telling my subscribers today, I said, doesn't it seem like she's going past, past Harry and demanding it herself and telling Charles, this is what I want? You can't tell me Harry's at home talking about he wants to be on the balcony. No, and I call foul because she should have been in court with him. Mm -hmm. She should have been. They should be glued to the hip. And what that tells me is there's tension in the house. And, and it's always going to be tension. There's never not going to ever be tension. And they're arguing. They're not happy. Nobody, nobody's happy because Megan is probably still trying to push. We need to say more and more and more negative. And Harry's probably trying to restrain her. I could be lying. I could. I'm, this is just a theory. But they are not getting along. Number one, Megan didn't like the way the book turned out. And so she's going to blame Harry. It's all his fault, Harry, that the book turned to glue. And then the drug use, she's going to hold that against him when she gets ready to exit. Pew! I think someone said it a long time ago that Elon Musk was free or, so, or, um, or um, the Amazon CEO was free. Maybe she'll go after him next. That wasn't a joke. That's for real. Megan thought when she married this prince that he had all this money too. Mm -hmm. She did. She did. He didn't have all this money. Not enough to satisfy her. An average, just your average person, they would have been, it would have been, it would have been suffice. But it wasn't enough for her. And you have to wonder, is that why it's rules not to marry an actress, not to marry, you know, certain a, a divorcee or, you know, there's got to be reasons why they have these rules in place to protect those that are coming in from the outside. And I was saying to someone, I was like, oh my goodness, did they not do a background check on this woman? Do we not know who she is? Are we seriously letting her in the house and now giving barking orders from Montecito? Balcony. <laughs> Archie's name. Why did Charles, King Charles, pick the very day of his birthday? My first thought was, me and my subscribers were going back and forth with this. My first thought was that he didn't want Megan to go and he knew if he had it on our birthday that she would come up with an excuse not to come. That was my first thought. But I was like, no, Charles don't think me thinking like that. Number two... Um, maybe they, that was the only date, date that they had and it just happened to coincide with Archie's birthday. But wouldn't it be like an honor to have his birthday on the same day as the coordination? He could tell his friends like, oh, guess when, you know, nobody will ever forget his birthday. Why she's trying to make him say it during the coronation or write it down. Just the mere fact that she wants it. He shouldn't do it. The mere fact that Megan wants Archie's name mentioned, which once again is taken away, taken away from the king, taken away from the British people, taken away from the ceremony, taken away from the things that we're supposed to be focusing on, off that focus and put it on Megan and her family, her kids, what she's doing. Because behind the scenes, she's got to let these people know that she that's giving her money, that she's got some type of relationship with the royals. Because eventually, if she doesn't, people are going to be starting to do this. 
And as you can see, Charles has already set the tone when he sent out the invitation that, hey, you are a guest only. You are not to participate. You are not a working role anymore because you decided you didn't want to be here anymore. This is what you and Harry chose. And just like Sean out, out, at Wood's um, guest said, and like I was telling my subscribers, you can't work for a company and then they invite you and you, you, you don't no longer work there. Okay. You left. And then they invite you to like a dinner and then you start telling them, well, you need to invite my kids and then you need to uh, put me on the program and I want to wear a tiara and I want to be on the balcony when they do all this stuff. That's just like writing them back and telling them that. And you don't even work there anymore. That's what it sounds like Megan is doing. That's how I know she's this spoiled, entitled brat that think that she is supposed to get any and everything that she wants from Harry and his father and the institution. Because what idiot, why would she want to look like an idiot up there doing this with a tiara on? If she's up there, it's just going to show dominance that, hey, see, I'm on the balcony. This is what I want. I accomplished that. She is. But she also has to be seen to keep making money back here in Montecito. And so she needs a photo op or some type of picture showing that there's some type of unity going on. Like, um... Schofield, that's her name, she's so pretty, said today. She said, pick up the phone, Megan, and call your father. Why are you trying to show photo ops? Because remember, she said it's all a fake behind the scenes. You got to wipe your tears and come out and, you know, suck it all up and pretend like everything is perfect. So is that what Megan is trying to do when she's trying to be on the balcony wave and get a picture with Charles that, that, um... Everything is okay when it's not. I don't remember her coming out with a statement saying, uh-oh, I may have told a story. <laughs> the, the family isn't racist, or is it? Unconscious bias. No, you guys have got to watch that one scene when Tom is interviewing uh, Harry, and Harry's on there like this. He's he's like, um, no, Megan never said they were prejudice, racist, <laughs> Tom was like, he was so confused, like we all are, but that's the thing, it's not going to just be swept up under the rug, the allegations, the lies that she said in that bombshell, sit down, Oprah debacle interview, <laughs> it's not going to go away, it's always going to be there, it's not going to disappear. Mm -mm. She will always be that person that said that the royal family was racist, her and Harry. And that somehow, at some given time, is people are going to demand that that be retracted. Because it's still out there hanging. Just a thought. Um, a little bit about her dad. Um, my thought was that she was going to do a publicity stunt. Yep, yep, yep. Excuse me. She was going to do a publicity stunt and um, maybe the father was going to see the kids and, you know, Thomas Markle was going to see Lilibet and, and Archie, but that ain't happening. Mm -mm. Why, why that ain't happening? She over there writing King Charles and telling him what she want. Ain't that ironic? Megan's got a pen and paper writing down what she wants from Harry's father. Okay, not her father, but Harry's father. King, this is Megan. I want this, 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 and this. So she didn't told him what she wanted. Okay, nobody's cut her off. King Charles didn't cut her off. He's allowing her to have a voice and to talk and to request these stupid things. After she called him racist, after the Oprah, the Netflix, the Spare. The therapy session in this 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 list. But like one of my subscribers said earlier, and she won't even talk to her father 
over some paparazzi pictures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Megan isn't talking to her dad because of the pa paparazzi pictures. But she went on a, uh, a, a, a tour. Her and Harry and just went decimated. Talked about the royal family for two years on a nasty global stage. Started with Oprah and just went, went, went crazy from there. But she won't talk to her father for some paparazzi pictures. But she can do all this to Charles and the king, uh, the royal family, and the British people. Treat them like crap and call them racist. And don't take it back. But still have that line of communication open with Charles? Why? Why should she be allowed to even speak to him or even anyone over there after she decided that she didn't want to be a part of that anymore? She was running. And after she decimated the family in the in the um, press. And then you go over to the flip side. You see her dad being mistreated on a on a global stage because of Megan. And want us to believe that he's scum of the earth because of the paparazzi pictures. He's dead to her. She says she lost her father in this process. She, he's dead to her. Now, I thought since he was at the L.A. airport that just maybe that she would actually allow him to see his grandkids for the first time. Because check this out. While she's trying to get King Charles to sound off Archie's name, uh -huh, her father-in-law, she's keeping in contact with them. She ain't cutting them off because she need them. She's going to use them. She's using up Charles. She's using up the royal family. She's using that Sussex names. She needs that connection. She's done with her father because he has nothing to offer. And I don't care if he ever sees the kids. That's his problem. It doesn't matter if it hurts him. It doesn't matter if it's a if it's a situation with him. It doesn't matter. It's what Megan wants, Megan gets. Because Megan is focused on the bigger picture right here. I'm going to the coordination. I want to do this, this, and this. I'm not even thinking about my father. Because maybe she's going, maybe he's maybe she'll call and say, hey, come by. Mm -mm. she's too busy plotting and planning on what she's going to do when she get over there to the coronation. She's too busy to mend anything with her father. But she's coming out with a TIG and she's coming out with a memoir to tell us more and more and more about herself. But the more she tells us about herself, the more and more people dislike who she is, the person that she's trying to tell us. And then when she gets it in the book, she repeats herself. Then she goes after the very thing that she needs to stay connected to and disses everybody else. Like her father is scum. All That whole side is just scummity scum. And she's being entertained by the things that she wants. She's being entertained by, by her entitlement because she married a prince. Harry got out the car, that car walking really fast. He looked like he was on something to me. He really did. Cause when he and I normally don't even speculate, but when he ran into that man like that, and even when he came up, he was a little stumbly. I said, Is he alright? I'm telling you, as soon as this because the drug use and the drug stuff it's not going away. He opened the door and now everybody's trying to see, is he an addict? Lady C just pretty much said that he was a drug addict. <laughs> but Megan is going to use that to her benefit to, to try to exit. That relationship won't last because of Harry is the same guy that M Megan married and Corey. They're the same guys. She attracts the same guys. Those that she can control and manipulate. If she can't control you and manipulate you, then she doesn't have you in her grasp. And then that means you have an opinion. But most of the guys she dated, and now, and even Harry now, you can tell that all her relationships stemmed around her 
controlling them, pulling the strings, being the puppet master. And so why wasn't she at court with Harry today? Why isn't she by his side holding his hand and, and rubbing up against him and tell him, telling him when to go and when not to go? She can get a sitter anytime she gets want to. She can get a nanny anytime she get want to. I don't care what continent it was on. I don't care if it was in um, the river and they had to go. To, it does not matter. She should have been there. But no, she's not by Harry's side anymore. She's not supporting him. Mm -mm. Listen, I love you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I didn't bore you. Have a great night.